and that for many women, the road to parenthood can be filled with detours, and sometimes it does not have the ending we all expect. This is exactly what happened to CNN's Kira Phillips, and she chose to write about her fertility journey. The book is titled The Whole Life Fertility Plan, Understanding What Affects Your Fertility to Help You Get Pregnant When to, to Help You Get Pregnant When You Want To. And Kira is here with us, along with blogger Mary Foster, who had her own struggle with fertility and took a different path. Thank you both for being here. Now, Kira, you talk in your book about a turning point. And of course, you now have twins as a result of those fertility treatments, but there was a turning point. Well, oh, yeah. I, I mean, I, 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 it, was, it was much later in the game for me. Mm -hmm. And at 40, uh, my house had flooded. I was covering the war in Iraq. I was going through this terrible divorce and I had lost everything. I remember sitting on my front porch thinking, oh my gosh, it's never going to happen for me. Mm -hmm. No family, no kids. I'm gonna have to start all over. I'm gonna have to think about something else. And I had a huge anxiety attack, a huge panic attack. Yeah. And that's when I started looking into fertility, yeah. doing it on my own, even before I met my husband now. Yeah, Mary, and you, you've had fertility treatments and you chose to adopt at, at the end of the day. What was, what happened there? What was that turning point? At what point did you say, okay, I've had enough? You know, I think it's really different for every family, but for me, it was a very similar situation. My husband and I had been married for 10 years. Our friends all had older kids. My younger sisters had little kids, and we just felt like we were tired of waiting for fertility treatments to work. Adoption had always been in my heart and just seemed like the right path for us at the time. Right, now I remember one time talking with Franklin Graham, mm -hmm. you know, the son of Billy Graham, yeah. and I was struggling with this. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he said to me, and Mary, you'll appreciate this, he said, you know, Kira, there's a lot of beautiful babies out there that need to be adopted. Right. And that, that option was in my mind as well. I right. wanted to try everything. Well, and it's interesting, I don't have children yet, and I'm in my 30s, and I thought about that, like, you know, is there a point where I would start thinking, okay, there are a lot of kids out there that we could provide a completely different life for them that they wouldn't necessarily have if we're not in their life. Now, Carrie, in your book, you talk a lot about how we prepare our bodies for having optimum fertility, right? right? And that's what I wanted to do. When I was going through all this, mm -hmm. I want I don't want women to make the same mistakes that I made or to be in that position of panic, right? So the book that my doctor and I wrote is for the youngest gal who's just discovering her sexuality. What should I eat, drink, um, the chemicals in my makeup, in my home? It all impacts your fertility. And so I want young women, women to be thinking about that all the way to the career-driven woman. Yeah. There are things now like freezing your eggs, fabulous option to put your DNA on ice, because right. you can carry it later in life. All the way up to, we talk about adoption, and we talk about fertility. So if we are an older mom, yeah. <laughs> we're called geriatric moms. Oh, geriatric moms. Kind of kick out of that, right? Um, that, you know, they're no, so I'm not <laughs> great. I know, I don't feel that way. I'm there too. <laughs> so there's great options for even the older woman. Right, right, so if I want to be a geriatric mom, no. <laughs> treatments and Mary I have friends that have been through your situation as well it's all as a woman personally it can be overwhelming you know seeing all these things that I need to do to prepare my body even to get there right and then making those decisions of going through the fertility treatments that both of you have been through and then possibly those not working is it an overwhelming process Kara yeah I mean I it was covered under our insurance I was very lucky I had three shots at it and I miscarried twice and the third time I, I, I got the twins and I had to go into this attitude. I mean, you have to look at the whole, how much it's going to cost. Does your insurance cover it? Yeah. How many times do I want to go through this? And for me, in my mind, I was going to keep going until my doctor said to me, Kira, you're finished. This is just not an option anymore. Yeah. yeah. Mary, you talk a lot about how the fertility process has taught you patience. <laughs> and you're like, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, I, I, in all of my friends who have had fertility, and struggles. Most of them are really high achievers, planners, people who have their life together and, and maybe just waited a little longer than the rest of the world to have a baby. And those kinds of people, you know, they're they're ready to get pregnant on day one and after many, many years of not getting pregnant, you finally realize that it's just not something that any human can control. It's it's just something that you have to let go of and it'll happen when it's supposed yeah. to happen. And I'm so happy that, Mary, that you said that because so much of our lives are about control, right? Especially, Carrie, you and I being in this industry. Oh, it's like, yeah. You, you want to control, control of everything. Yeah, and sometimes <laughs> you have to be because you know there's so much competition. In this, you know, you just want to keep going and working yeah. and, and rising and you can't control no. this process. And are you ever really even ready for the process? I don't think so. And, Mary, I love that she
she said patience was the most important thing. My, my doctor, Dr. Jamie Griff, always, he always tells women the three P's, patience, persistence, and a lot of profanity, because you have to vent. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> yes. And it's very, because it's also very emotional, and you never really know so. what your outcome is going to be, right? Right. I think you have to let go of all expectation, mm -hmm. and just say, okay, this is my life mm -hmm. as it is, mm -hmm. and here's my options, and whatever option I choose, I'm going to go with it with grace, and dignity and yeah. excitement and just embrace the whole journey. And I don't want the book to scare anybody. You were telling me yeah, it was yeah. really overwhelming know, for you, yeah, right? It was because I'm that will eventually likely be what I mean, I don't know yet, but you yeah. know, I, I will be likely an older mother, so it is overwhelming. I want you to be empowered by it. Right. And I am empowered by the way, because I thought it was an incredible book. I was empowered by it. But like where do I start? What's my first step? You know, and, and what is that? What do you think? What are the What's a takeaway that a mom can, that a future mom can take, a geriatric mom can take? <laughs> well, you were telling, you were being very personal with me and sharing your story with me and considering your age and yeah. the situation that you're in, I wouldn't want you to rush into anything that you didn't feel comfortable with, right? right? Yeah. And so I would tell you to freeze your eggs. Mm -hmm. You're still young enough. You said you had the test done and right. things are looking good. Yeah. I would freeze your eggs and then just relax and wait for the right moment to come yeah. where you meet someone you want to share the rest of your life with. In, this, in addition to a family. Yeah, and if that doesn't happen, I can always be a happy mom like Mary. You adopt. And, and adopt. Yes. And I'll think it out that way. So thank you guys both for sharing this story. And your book, of course, Kira, is so incredible, so inspirational. Um, and also just sharing, putting your story out there, I just admire it tremendously. So thank you. Thank you. It was an honor. Yeah. It was great to meet Mary, too. Yeah, great meeting you, Mary. Thank you. Lucky to meet you. <laughs> Holly. Love that Kira joined us today on this set. Thanks for that. All right, guys, if you have ever worked in a restaurant, well, then you know the kitchen can be